I have no clue or idea what happened to Tamla. When Tamla leaved the house, I never followed her or looked for her. I stayed home in the house with my daughter watching her. Donna is not a, a very nice person at all. You know, she's evil, she's the devil, and uh, you know, she, she thinks she know everything. She don't know nothing. She is accusing me about her daughter disappearance. The only thing I did is try to take care of that girl, love her, and take care of her. But when you're a grown person, you can't tell grown-ups what to do. You know, she left the house every night running in the streets. I couldn't make her stay home. The last time I saw Tamla Wells was, I came home around about 8.30. It was, a, it was a summer night. It was getting dark. She was already dressed to go. She called me a couple times, asked me how far I was away from home. I finally pops in the door. And then she said, you better go around the corner and get your daughter, you know? So I want to hurry up and run around the corner and get my daughter before she leave, because I wanted to ask her where she was going, you know? So as I'm proceeding going around the corner, my daughter is on her way back with five more of the kids. So now we all walking together. Then we look up, Tamla riding right by, by us in the car. And I start to ask, just, uh, holler her name and stop, but you know, I just said forget it. You know, I was with the kids and you know, as long as I had my daughter, I was good. Crime stoppers come out to my house at least two or three times a year. They all on my property. They yelling, hollering, bamming on my doors and, and everything and, and we just, we just, you know, fussing and fighting. And, you know, if, if they come to me and talk to me right, I would talk to them right. But you, you ain't gonna just, just bully me. Cause I'm tired of y'all hey, coming out to my calm house. Calm down. We gonna keep coming. You tell us where Tamala is, and we'll stop. Where she at. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. You know. No, you know. You know where she you is. You yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, I failed the polygraph test, and the police, and the district attorney or somebody, they was all trying to railroad me, just, you know, like I'm the one. They were trying to, you know, make me like I'm a bad person, you know, threatening me, talking about, you know, if I don't straighten up, I'm gonna go to jail. It's been 12 years. Y'all should have found something, you know? I ain't did a thing. That's why y'all ain't found nothing. I'm here to get my name clear, and I'm just fed up with it, Ricky. Is not no uh, uh, bad person and 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 got anything to do with Tamala Wells' disappearance. It was August 6, 2012. I received a phone call on August the 7th, which is that morning, about 6:30 a.m. by my granddaughter, who was only six years old at the time, and she went on to say, "My mommy didn't come home last night," and my heart just went to beating like. She, it's Monday, you know, it's Tuesday. Kids are out for the summer. She would be home with her daughter. In fact, she never went with anywhere without her. Was Ricky the father of this little girl? He's the father of the little girl, but he never put, established maternity until Tamla went missing. So my whole thing is, is you such this great father and all of this stuff that you're telling these people, how come your baby was born a bastard? How come you didn't sign the birth certificate where she was born? Why did you wait till the mother disappear and they removed the little girl three years after Tamla went missing to sign a birth certificate to prove you was the father? Did you like that your daughter was with Ricky? No. Yeah. Why not? Because Tamla was 15 years old and he groomed my daughter, okay? He was 17 years older than her. He, she kept it a secret for three years until she was 18 years old. So in order for me to go after this guy, my daughter's 18 at this particular time, and I'm not about to lose my relationship with my daughter for some pervert. Right. A predator. When did you begin to suspect that Ricky was involved in your daughter's disappearance? The day I arrived in the city of Detroit, I went straight to Tamla's house from the airport. When I got there, he took forever to answer the door, first of all. Second of all, when I got inside the door, the house was in uh, terrible shambles, like somebody had been rambling, looking for something. And I was looking like, what the heck is going around? Let's go on here. And he said, oh, oh, I was, uh, nothing. And I know that my daughter had money put up in that home because he had plans to leave this boyfriend because he had got so obnoxious, so controlling, so 
uh, abusive. And see, I didn't learn all of this stuff. I knew parts of it. I don't know relationship that's, that has troubles at times, Steve. But when I got there to find out that my daughter was missing, and he had no concern at all. He had no love at all, Steve. He, his main concern was to run to the EBT office to get the name changed from Tamla to his name. The what is more important than going to find your baby's mother, your girlfriend, the girl that you say you love so much? You are more important about an EBT card. I mean, he just been arrogant and nasty and bitter and just malicious and saying things that's not true about me. They have said so many things about me. Today I'm here to confront. I don't want to hear all that ramble, bamble crap. I want to know where Tamla is, which did you do, what is your involvement, where is my baby? You stop this Don't come crack, in this chat. Don't this no. Okay? You're a liar. You're a manipulator. You're a manipulator. You're a manipulator. Okay? You're a manipulator. You're a manipulator. You're a liar. Everything. I hate your guts. You're a liar. I brought your door to that car. And she couldn't have no you Okay? Nothing. I put it in Look my name for her. Did you okay? You a ass suck. up today, huh? You've been a all your life. Well, where is that? Okay, you always don't be one. Where is my daughter? Where is my daughter? Okay? She should stay Steve, at home, he's okay? He's a dirty dog. She's in the streets. 24-7. Okay. Okay. Tamla, she was running the streets all the time, sir. I couldn't keep her in the house, okay? And Tamla was 18 or 19 years old when I met her. You know, her mother lying about she was 15. Donna, she's a bad person. She's a real bad... But this bad isn't about Donna. I know it ain't. About... Okay, okay. Police called me several times to come pick Tamla up from the police station for drunk driving. Uh, drunk driving and coming to pick my daughter up and her up. And the car she talking about Tamla had, I brought it for her, or used Saturn. Tamla didn't want it in her name because she didn't have no license. What was your relationship with Tamla? I was her baby daddy. Were you lovers? We was lovers once before. But you weren't, you weren't in a relationship with her when she yeah. disappeared? No, she just stayed with me because she'd been cheating on me, Steve. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I'm... Well, I mean, didn't you feel a little awkward that you were with such a young girl? Yeah, but I thought she was gonna find somebody her age. She never left. You know, I really did. Do you know what happened to her? I have no idea, Steve. I don't run so the streets. So she and the daughter, are sta your daughter, are staying with you, right? Yeah, I moved. I, I had an apartment, and I moved her in with right. me. Right. Uh, when did you notice that Tamala was gone? The next day. She didn't come home. And I, I called Donna every day. I called her every so day when, when her daughter she, didn't come when home. When she didn't come home, what did you do? Call the police. You did? And yes, I did, report. Steve. Why are you the main suspect in this case? Because Donna got it in their head. She's a manipulator. <laughs> but a lot of times, yeah, she's a when somebody disappears, Steve. something like this, usually it's somebody very close to them that yeah, did something. Yeah, I know, something. I know, right. I know. Uh, it's been a while since I seen Rick. I talked to him on the phone through my niece, you know what I mean? Because she had put him on the phone or whatever, but it's been a while since I seen him face to face, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know what I can say to him. I don't got no really no words for him, but only one thing is where's my sister? Did, can you help find her or do you know where she at? You know, I'm tired of hearing it, you know? My thing is, what, what have you done to try to find her? The whole time that my mom been doing this missing, um, going around, you know, passing flyers out, he was never there. He was, he, he, he never came and walked around and passed out flyers. He, he didn't need my mother to, to pass out no flyers because he lives in the city of Detroit, you understand? He could have easily went anywhere and passed out some flyers, you know what I mean? But he, he got a cold heart about this whole situation. And that's what makes me say that he knows something that happened to my sister because anybody with that kind of attitude and behavior, that's a sign of guilt. What makes me angry is because the fact that I know that she would have never came up, she would have never did nothing like this. This was like done like against her will. She would give the shirt off her back. She had, she's not a person that'll harm or talk bad on a person or none of that. So anybody that did this to her, they had they, 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 they planned this. this. This was planned against her. He failed the lie detector test several times. With, with, with the police, and um, with that being said, that's that's enough right there. But you know, like I said, you know, he's very manipulative. That's all I can tell you. I don't believe nothing he say come out of his mouth. I don't believe nothing he say. He's very wicked. 
and he's not loving at all. Because a man that love would get out there and look for his, his you know, the, the mother of his kids. I hope, I hope that they, that we get justice and that they find that they, they finally find out to see that this man is guilty on all accounts, on all accounts. And, and I, ho I hope he'll find the, the, the truth in his heart to tell us where she at and tell the truth about it. It's time now to tell the truth. You didn't want to tell us the truth all these years, but maybe now you come to Steve's show, maybe he'll tell us the truth now. How you doing, Steve? Yeah, we, we don't want fighting. Okay. No, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't come yeah. here for nothing. No, I know. Seriously, Steve, I, I feel like you know something, Rick. James, man, I, I, I ain't no man. Listen, yeah. to me, yeah. listen to me, Rick. No, you listen to me. You listen to I'm me. I did. I listened to yeah. you back there. I you listened. know I ain't did nothing to your sister, James. I, I, I know that. You, you know that. Put your hands I love your sister. You put your hands on the I ain't did time. nothing to your sister. sister but sister, no, I ain't never hit. Come on now. I ain't never hit. Come on, Rick. I love your sister and take care of her. Man, you was a lot. You letting your mother get in your brain. You know what I'm saying? Not, not having my mom in my life, it was it was pretty hard. You know, going to school and the kids get their mom. My mom did this for me. My mom get this for me. It's always my dad did this for me and my dad did this. And it's just like, where your mom at? The last time I seen my mom was when we see our car ride, like turn the block and like driving towards our way and pass us. That was the last time. I seen her that day. As I get older, I don't think my dad has anything to do with it, but it's just like it's been a long time. It's been 12 years. I'm really just tired of just getting put in the middle of all this. Like, I, I love my dad and I love my grandma, but it's, it shouldn't be no picking sides to who, whose side I'm on. It's nobody's side I'm on. I'm on the side that my mom to help find my mom. I help after the show airs. My dad clears his name and all the bad people, all the negativity and people that have something to say, he didn't prove to everybody. I know it's been a long time and finally it's happening. And I hope that any, if anyone knows something or knows what happened about my mom and everything, just please speak up. Ricky, you came here, took a lie detector test. And we asked you, were you in any way involved in the disappearance of Tamala? You answered no. Did you know what happened to Tamala on August 6, 2012? You answered no. Did you discard any evidence from inside the car that Tamala left behind before you reported her missing to the police? You answered no. The results came back the same to each one of those three questions. And it came back that Ricky did not tell the truth. I know! I know! I told you, you a liar, Bill. Yeah, she did. You a liar. You a liar, dude. And you better go with that. You, you can't lie. I'm not going to let you take the test. Because yeah, you a liar. Steve, you I don't want to disrespect you. Sister. You, you have been, been the main gone. suspect. Yeah. You failed a police lie detector test. I think that was real. You failed this test. What do I got against? I don't even know you. I know, Steve, but this but is crazy, But you came here man. and you failed our test. God, I didn't do nothing. God, no, I didn't, OK? I did. What if someday your little girl disappeared? Who? They won't find out. Oh, that's, yeah. Man, I'm trying to. What I'm... would happen if your little girl disappeared you had no answers. You didn't know where she was. But she's lying. Man, let Who's me go, lying? man. Come on, man. Who's Y'all, lying? Man, I ain't did nothing. Yeah, she man, wouldn't even know. Oh, what the f***? Oh, that's dead. That's dead. That's dead. That's dead. That's dead. I hope at the bro, very least bro, you know you the did. police reopen this case and they look at jail, another bro. hard look at you. And with that, you can get the hell off my stage. Take another look at him. Thank you so much, Steve. <laughs> Thank God for a man like you, Steve. Thank God for you, man. I've been watching you for many years, Steve. I appreciate everything you do, man. And I, I love you, man. And I hope we can help. I you really you did help, Steve. You yeah. helped. You just don't know it. You helped a big lot. Right. God yeah. sent you, man. Today yeah. made 11.4 years today. God opened a door for me to come here. I've been trying to get to your show for years. But this is the day that God provided. And I knew he was going to be lying. I knew it. I tried to give him a bit of a doubt. Well, hopefully something happens now. Good luck to you. Thank you, Steve.
Click here to watch more Wilco's. Click here to subscribe and get a front row seat for all the action. Can you relate to this story? Go to www.stewilcoast.com to get my help.